Hey folks, today I wanted to talk to you about some more of my old paper computer games. These are co collectively called the Mole Men Saga, um, after the titular creatures who are in fact Mole Men. Um, so in my last videos I talked about some of these old games I made when I first started making paper computer games again. I was trying to make them like a consistent series of adventures following like Pierre and Ari and Zuvac. Um, this one kind of you know, like, he went off on a tangent, followed a different character, but it was, you know, still tangentially related to that story. In my next batch of games, The Mansion of Mystery, I tried going in a completely new direction. Same thing for the, When Evil Flows in Freeness, though that one wasn't as good. The Ancient Secret Under Shree kind of got back to this whole core, this whole core, you know, story on, on the planet Shree. Um, so I was kind of like flitting in and out of that main storyline kind of thing. With the Mole Men Saga, I sort of went my, like, a totally new direction. Um, but it will eventually, like, later on in, not in these games, but in later games, I, en I do end up tying them in to this larger storyline and, and in a big way. So these will later on become relevant to the overall PCG, you know, plot. So let's dive right in. The very first game is called Into the Heart of the World, a game of paper which simulates a computer game. Uh, that is uh, clearly a fancy way of saying paper computer game, which is what this is. It, this was my, I called this number 4.6. I, I, I don't know why. How many games were there before this? There was, let's see, one, two, three, four, uh, five, six. So this is actually my seventh in this in uh, paper computer game in this iteration. Uh, but I guess I was counting some of them as like half adventures, mini adventures, you know, whatever. Um, but anyway, let's dive right in. So we've got our little backstory introduction thing going on. Your name is Yippet. So this is an original and interesting uh, character. Since your accidental lab creation, you have tried to enter the heart of your world. You're close to completing your digging machine, but you need one more crucial part, the fabled jewel of Tekensis. Over here we got, like this is Yippet. We only see the back of his chair. There's like a kind of interesting crystal ball design on the back of it. And just like a clawed hand. This is kind of like a nod to uh what was his name? Dr. Claw from Inspector Gadget, I guess. But, you know, this is not Dr. Claw. It's, you know, taking it in a different direction. And it looks like he's looking at, like, all these different screens. So this already implies he's an interesting character because of what we see on his different screens. It implies he's monitoring a lot of different situations. We see uh, this is Ginkus holding up his staff from um, this game. The last of the Zarelta, uh, at the end of it, he holds up his staff. This is Zuvac, um, robotic clown on a stick from many from Chris's old paper computer games and, and some of my new ones. Uh, this is like a looks just looks like a space shot of some sort of planet. I don't remember what that is. Here's a, a farmer, which is a reference to the farmer from the old paper computer games. That's just a random skull. I don't know what that's about. Uh, yeah, I don't know, but. Clearly, this is an interesting guy if he's able to, you know, look in on all these scenes happening across the PCG universe uh, um, on his screens. But in this game, he's kind of mysterious. We don't yet know who he is. Um, so the game just starts with he's just walked into the uh, museum and he has to figure out how to... Uh, get past you know the 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 cop guy with the funny hat to get capture that the jewel of Tekensis, which is just on display in the museum but it's the essential component for his digging machine there's all these traps and whatnot i seem to remember this one was like kind of like a this puzzle was a trick question it was like to get the jewel you just have to just walk right up to it lift the case and take it if you try anything more elaborate it won't work because the the cop and all the traps are ready for that but like just taking it they're they're just completely not prepared so that works and you get away and then you get it you take it and you go into your digging machine and you're digging down 
through the ground, and uh, there's this monster you have to, like, and if you keep digging, it'll eat you. Trick is, you're, you, like, this is another trick puzzle. Uh, you, you're not supposed to care, because if you go right through it, your drill will just come out the other side of the monster, so it doesn't matter anyway. But if you try avoiding it, or if you try, like, attacking the top of its head or anything, that won't work. So I guess maybe there's, like, a theme in this game I don't really remember. This is the first time I'm looking at this in many years also, so. Anyway, so we drill down through this guy. We finally come out on the other end, and we get down into the heart of the world. Uh, the core of the planet, as this implies. And here in the core of this planet are... Some mole men, and we actually, like, we meet them, we introduce ourselves, and when Chris was originally playing this game, uh, he, I mean, the first thing he did, obviously, was honk their noses, which they were very offended by, but he later, uh, he kept trying to, like, talk to them, and then, so they, like, he convinced them he wasn't a threat, and then, you know, I think there, this was a legitimate puzzle, I don't remember what the what the solution is, but you have to do something with that button to get through this door. And then we have now been admitted out into this is Mole City proper, and this is at the core of the planet. So gravity is not in any particular, <coughs> excuse me, gravity is not going in any direction. And that is scientifically correct at the, at the, at the core of the planet Earth. Uh, all the gravity from, you know, one side of the Earth and the gravity from the other side of the Earth, they kind of cancel out. So at the, like, at the core, you'd be weightless if you could survive, if there was a hollow space there, which in the Earth there isn't. But in this planet, apparently there is. And there's a city there uh, built on, you know, various surfaces. So you have buildings here, buildings here, buildings here. This is sort of like a big, like, rocky protrusion at the very core. It's attached to the, you know, outer part of the like the, you know, the inner walls of the planet. Here's some houses, you know, some random old men living there. And this is Mole City. This is where they live, their entire civilization. And here's some, like, massive, like, power reactors, like, powering the whole thing. And, um, the puzzle here is you're supposed, like, I guess, Yip It, we have decided, our, our protagonist, is kind of a bad guy because... The puzzle here is you have to destroy these two reactors and destroy Mole City, uh, committing genocide and wiping out the Mole Man. I don't know why. I guess he's just a bad guy, and that's just what he does. But in the meantime, when Chris was playing this, the first thing he did was he uh, discovered a polit he he explored Mole City and he found that there was like a an election going on, so he ran for mayor. Um, of the city, and he won. He became the mayor, and, um, yeah, so he was mayor for a while, and then he got bored and did destroy, like, figure out how to destroy the, uh, the, uh, reactors, and just at the last second, he escapes through this hole, goes all the way up here, and up, back up to the surface. And the surface, this is at the planet's North Pole, this is, uh, there's like a patch of just warmth and grass and flowers from like, I guess the warmth coming up from the hole and surrounding here, this is like all cold and snow and this is, you know, the North Pole. This is a ref reference to, uh, um, okay, so my friend's mom, she used to tell us, she, she told us that this was actually true, that on Earth... If you go to the North Pole, there's a little patch of grass. And if you go down, you know, the hole there, you'll come to an underground civilization of mole men. And, uh, and that idea just inspired this game. So um, that's why that's there. Um, so anyway, you've escaped. But now I guess you get attacked by snow people, as I recall. And... But it was a pretty simple puzzle to get past them. And once you do, you've just beaten the game. So it's kind of just a random adventure. Um, at that point, it wasn't going to be anything. I, I just... Uh, the reason I... Um, see, there isn't even really much inventory. It's just 
explosive poison in the jewel of Dickensis. The only the reason I really made this game was to get a new per um oh wait no that's not true. I'm mixing it up with something else. I was thinking I made it to get a new person into PCGs. But now that I but I was just telling you that Chris played it and he's not a new person, so um I guess I just wanted to try something new. Um and you know, have a, create a new world and some new characters and you know, so just have fun and that's what I did. So, but um I later on decided to return to that world with the second game Revenge of the Mole Men. So, as the title implies, I mean, I can I think you can imagine where this is going. So, the game starts up, uh, we're playing as Yippit again, and you know, here here we are as Yippit, and now we've been apprehended, and this the new character, she is the inquisitor, and she is there to interrogate him and and ask him all these questions. Um why does she look like that? What what species is she? Who knows? Uh, this is the first time we've seen anything like her in a PCG or anywhere. Um, the trick was you had to escape. I don't remember how you do that, but I think there's like a vent somewhere you can get into somehow. Um, and then there's, there's this screen um, where you have to travel along the vent. But inside the vent, there's like mole men zombies that are, uh, you know, kind of like wandering around. I guess they've been messed up by the dis like fallout from the destruction of Mole City, and now they're on the hunt for flesh. So you have to get past them and escape down this hole. Once you escape from the police building, um like here you are you've escaped and like by the way now i'm establishing like how does you know i'd never really addressed how does yip it move around when he, just sitting in that chair all the time well now i'm kind of like establishing through this little like woo, 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 kind of effect that he's like it's built to hover it like moves around for him so anyway there's an angry mob of mole people coming for him this screen isn't really a puzzle it's mainly just like a like a cut scene just to describe you know what's going on, and he just has to run away. So, then we've got sort of like a maze screen. Here's where we were in the previous screen, the the mob of mole people, and here's the police station. And what did he have to do here? Let's see, there's like a torch, there's three things. I don't know what this was. Here's a bridge, it looks like it's over some water, but I mean, you could just go this way. But, I've, but as I recall, the thing was that the mole people are chasing you, and you have to get away from them. Like, if you go too obvious of a path, they'll catch up to you and they'll get you. So you have to keep, you know, delaying them, like, losing them until you make it, you know, pass them to the next screen. And then, uh, oh my gosh. The final boss. His name was Grandos. The nasally incapacitated mole man giant. He uh, he couldn't smell very good, despite that big nose. But he was very gigantic, and he was a huge threat, and he was going to kill Yippit. But fortunately, Yippit was able to outsmart him by. Um, I think he was able to just convince him. Oh, that's right. One of the one of the mole men zombies that uh, that like he, yeah one of the mole men zombies that was wandering around. He had he had turned red like in Resident Evil. Some of the zombies turn red when they come back, and then they're extra fast. So. Uh, this guy wasn't very smart, so Yippit was able to convince him. I caught that guy red-handed. He's the guy who destroyed Mole City. So th the giant was convinced and went off and ate the zombie instead. And that was that was just the end of the game. The inventory, we don't again, we don't have much. We just have the torch we got in the maze screen and a hand grenade. And yeah, so... Uh... That was Revenge of the Mole Man. Again, again, it's like even shorter, like a super short adventure. Um, 
I, um, I like returning to worlds that I just created, you know, for one game that have nothing to do with anything else. Um, and I also like tying everything in together. So these Mole Men games, like right now, they seem like they don't seem that consequential. They, like they're just kind of like weird, quirky little stories. But in my games, everything ties in um, everything. And these will come back in a big way. Like later on, specifically in Balzac Globetron, we find out who Yippet is and what his backstory is, how he was created, why he was created. And it ties in, it's very important to the backstory of that game, which is the biggest paper computer game ever made. So yeah, uh, in the upshot, these were fun games to make. This, these were the really the first time I think that we made that I made a paper computer game, uh, where, where the you play as a villain like that. I've never really done that before, and I don't think I've done it since. Oh no, I have. I have. In the next video, I'll talk about that. In fact, there's there's a the, the next games I made were. Um, about an alien invader he's like the advanced scout for an alien invasion whoops an advanced scout for an alien invasion fleet and he has to uh uh destroy humanity so that's what those games are about and uh i'll talk about that in the next video so anyway uh thanks for watching folks